Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let me tell you about full stack web development yet again. The year is about to end and you would want to know what is important, what you should learn in 2023 and beyond to become a full stack developer. This is a complete video on you getting to a full stack developer from zero to 100% employed. So make sure you watch it till the end. And there are resources, there are plans, there are exercises, projects, everything included in this one. So let's start. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So I'm going to take some help from full stack web development roadmap, which you can find on codedam.com. A quick way to access this is go to paths.sh slash full stack. So when you visit this URL, you're going to land up on this particular page, which will show you everything you need to do from the very starting to become a full stack developer. Now let's start and discuss each and everything in detail so that you understand what you need to do in 2023 and beyond as a developer. So you're going to start off with basics of web, right? Now the reason we start with basics of web and that to internet fundamentals is because you need to know about internet and DNS and HTTP in general first. I feel that you should know about that before you get into anything at all, right? Because you will be able to appreciate how internet and how DNS and how everything in general works, what you're getting into as a developer before you start learning technologies. So this is the first course in this learning path as well. If you click on this, you're going to see that this course is available for you. You can try this course for free. So this course covers a couple of topics, internet and DNS and HTTP, which are most important ones. Of course, it covers a lot more, but you will understand that when you start attempting this course. Once you're done, you can figure out what the next course is. It's HTML and CSS. And of course, there's a lot to cover in this course that is also included in this one giant learn HTML and CSS course, which you can find again over here. The topics, which are some major topics of this are included. Obviously, this is not an exhaustive list, but this should get you started on one of the what are the most important topics in HTML and CSS. If you open the basics of web module, you can see both of these courses listed here for you. So it's easier for you to access it in a specific order if you're trying to do that. The next thing that comes is basics of front end. Now, once you are familiar, a little bit familiar with internet and HTTP in general, next thing is you know, understanding how front end works. That again involves a bunch of more HTML because the HTML CSS you learned in the first course might not be advanced. It might not be covering everything you need to know, but this particular course, advanced HTML CSS, covers that. So advanced HTML and CSS is the first course. Then you can move on to JavaScript Essentials. JavaScript Essentials again, yet again, is a course which will allow you to get started with JavaScript. JavaScript is a programming language of the web. So you need to learn JavaScript concepts like DOM and modern JavaScript, ES6 plus syntax, promises, uh, async await, you know, a little bit of generators also, not that we use it a lot, but you should know about the things that exist in JavaScript world. And that you will also cover parts of that in advanced practical JavaScript course. Again, I like to divide JavaScript into two parts, the theory part and the practical part. The theory part consists of things like, you know, object prototypal chains and how V8 works, how, how event loop works, how to, you know, do things on micro task queue, stuff like this, which is advanced, but still a little bit of theory. Practical includes a lot more things which you will use in day-to-day -day life with DOM, with objects, promises, bunch of projects covered, right? So all of that is included in this particular course, which you can find here. Then, of course, you should take a look at Chrome DevTools. Chrome DevTools is one of the most important tools available as a front-end developer for you to debug what are you doing, where are you going wrong, must have must have knowledge on Chrome DevTools on all the common tabs, right? You should know how to intercept or you know how to see the network tab. You should know what a console is. You should know where your source code of the website is. It also helps you debug the websites. It also helps you see how the websites are functioning. So super important concept. Once you're thorough with basics of front end, all the way we have to do then all the way we come back to front end and back end tooling. It includes things like NPM and YARN because you know, these two package managers and can be interchanged, can be interused, but you will spend a lot of time figuring out installing YARN modules or NPM modules or even PNPM modules, things like these. And you can also work on version control system as a tooling thing because version control system involves Git primarily, how to host your projects on GitHub, how to host projects, you know, on other VCS websites like Bitbucket also. But these two links will help you solidify your stack. 
they will let you do what you can say as you know using other people's work first of all this section npm and yarn would allow you to install modules so that you can reuse other people's work and secondly this particular area the version control system area would allow you to publish your content online right to github then github can be linked to let's say Vercel, so you can deploy your projects on Vercel on the edge super fast super easy to set up so super important concepts then we come to the real things react.js react.js is important because react.js is a framework almost like it's it's a library sure but you know if you consider things like use swr or tailwind or you know other utilities which comes bundled with react it is almost like a full stack framework for yourself to uh, in Next.js, for example, Next.js is also kind of React itself. So React is a powerful technology, so as to say, and you should invest time working with React, right? Learn about React fundamentals, learn about libraries like UseSWR, Tailwind CSS, work with states and build some projects. Everything is included in all of, in all of these courses. So that should be your first step. Then you come back again to React.js, which is advanced, fairly advanced. You learn about React hooks, design patterns in React, advanced react concepts build some projects all good stuff about react you cover in these two particular modules right whenever you are trying to become a developer then as you're learning about react js it's also not a bad idea to consider javascript concepts again because of course you can't learn everything you can learn up to 90 percent of the stuff but nobody really learns everything and you need to get to at least 95 or 98 percent of the stuff if you want to get really good two percent stuff i don't think even experts know i don't think even i know i discover a lot of new things about javascript every day but you need to get to 98 or 97 if you want to become a great developer right so we have to revisit things which we have already done js under the hood is a course from brad Traversy, which covers a lot of interesting things thread and call stack execution context memory overview javascript engines and stuff and this again this course is also for free so there you go then you have advanced theoretical javascript as a course which again covers parts of that but in a different way so make sure you check out both both of these courses inside advanced JavaScript section. Then from a testing and scale evaluation perspective, you should learn about tools like Cypress. One tool which is missing here, which we will update and add before 2023 or maybe just after 2023 starts is a tool known as Puppeter. It's also a super solid E2E testing tool, but you would also learn about VTest. You will also learn about tools for, you know, integration and unit testing. So all of that would come over here very soon. Once we are thorough with front end and a little bit of testing, we start with back end web development which again is super super important for a full stack developer you start with node.js fundamentals because this is a full stack node.js learning path in a way and we also start with linux fundamentals because linux is also a super important technology to put in your tech stack you would be working with servers you would be working with cli all the time so you have to know how to work with things like these once that is done we move towards more towards databases and how to form apis using stuff like graphql or even rest we cover advanced node.js concepts you should cover about that you should learn about how to work with databases like mongodb mongoose build some apis using graphql or rest api all of the stuff which requires you to do coding on back end and expose certain api inputs on front end connected with the database will make you a solid back-end developer once you are done with that you have to move on to production ready practices because that is not what you do in real work right that's that's still pet project things in production you use certain set of good quality tools like you know instead of using react to build a user facing app which you want to get indexed on google which is like you know a production ready app you would probably want to consider Next.js, not React directly. You would probably want to consider TypeScript instead of just writing your apps natively. You would want to use CI CD, some sorts of CI CD with GitHub Actions. It could be Circle CI, any sort of CI tool, but I prefer GitHub Actions. You have to be working with caching a lot of times because those queries, I tell you, they get expensive and you want to cache them because you don't want to spend a lot of compute time, a lot of waiting time for users. So Redis, super important. Secure web applications. One of the most important things you can do as a backend developer is write secure applications. And you know, people get hacked all the time. Services get hacked all the time. They get DDoS, they get, uh, you know, SQL injections. 
so many vulnerabilities exist in the world you have to make sure if you are doing it properly you have to write secure web applications and yeah that's pretty much it once you get done with all of this we do offer you a certification for the learning path of course you have to complete the full learning path from codedam if you want this particular certification but yep that's pretty much it and a lot of these resources i mean all of them are available on codedam but feel free to use that as just a resource if you want because this might as well be you know used by you to just make sure that you're learning the right things no matter from where you are learning but this helps you in order to become a good developer this helps you to stay on track to stay focused to not learn let's say if you're learning react js not just start learning python because there is no use of python in front end web development right so you don't want to get lost that is the whole point of this roadmap. It's not about, you know, just letting you focus only on a few technologies. You can swap React.js with Svelte if you know Svelte, if you know that this is also an alternate option. But for those of you who don't know what they're doing, stick to this roadmap. And this is an opinionated roadmap created by me, created by us, our team. Therefore, we know what we are doing, right? For front end, for full stack development, this is a good stack to start with in 2023 and beyond. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a comment below and leave a like on this. Share it with your friends because that really helps you know, just boost the video organically. Visit codedamp.com slash learning paths full stack or shorten URL paths.sh slash full stack. And I will see you in the next video very soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of Codedamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching.